Hi, I'm Seben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled A Tutorial on Filament Lamps Interconnection. Let me say a few words about the background of this presentation. There was a LinkedIn post, and here's the link to it, and it is going also to be printed at the description section of the video that you are now watching. And this post included a quiz with several questions suggested as a test for students. Now, this presentation of this video explains the deficiency in the formulation of the quiz and explains how a modified quiz can be solved considering the nonlinearity of lamp filament. So here is the quiz, here, here are the questions. Given this series circuit consisting of three identical light bulbs connected in series, we have three lamps here, and then there is a switch, and there is a input voltage. When the switch S is closed, do the following increase, decrease, or stay the same. First of all, the intensity of bulb A and B, so when you close it, the switch is the intensity going up or down or stays the same. Intensity of bulb C and current drawn from the battery, if it's going up or down or stays the same and the power dis dissipated in the circuit, okay? Is it, again, going up, down, or stays the same? Now, I think that these questions cannot be answered because there is no indication what is the voltage, and furthermore, there is no information about the relationship between the current and voltage, like I as a function of voltage of the lamps, which are crucial for answering the quiz. And also, there is no information about the light intensity as a function of the voltage. So the magnitude of the voltage can make a very big difference. Nonetheless, there have been many comments to this uh, post, and one of them that the circuit is obvious, and it, it is not self-evident that the light bulbs are resistive lobes. That is, apparently, Jim thinks that they are resistive lobes. And then there is another comment by another person, First, replace the light bulb with arbitrary and equal resistors. The answer is trivial and doesn't require a deep understanding of electronics. Well, it may not be require a deep understanding of electronics, but it certainly requires an understanding of light electronics, that is, lighting. And obviously, these two persons are not aware of what is a filament lamp. Now, I'm going to solve this problem in an accurate way, and I'm also adding more questions, like to find the current, the actual value of the current, the voltage, and the light intensity of each lamp at each of the two switching states. Okay, so this is something that I'm adding. Now, to solve the problem, we have to have some background on filament lamps, and this is what I'm going to do next. So, here is a Typical I as a function of V, VI curve of a lamp, a incandescent lamp, a filament lamp. This is from this uh, popular website. And here we have a table. This is the voltage and the current power resistance. And from this we can see that, uh, first of all, it's nonlinear. There's no question about that. A linear resistor should have a linear line here, okay? So we don't have it here, so obviously the lamp, and we know that the lamp is nonlinear. And also what is interesting here that you look, look at the resistance, okay, this is the voltage divided by the current, you see it starts with a very low resistance, then it goes up, up to 10 volt, okay? So this is a highly nonlinear element, that's not just a resistor. And obviously in a nonlinear element, it depends where you are on this curve uh, if you like to look at some characteristic or if you like to connect these in series, as we'll see later on. Another plot that uh, I found on the internet, where well, there are many, of course, there are more professional uh, information about lamps, but uh, I, I just picked up some data here. And we see here also in a very nice way for two lamps, this is a uh, halogen lamp, and this is a regular tungsten lamp. Now, these two lamps are actually filament lamps, 
but they are built in a different way such that say the halogen can go to a much higher temperature without deteriorating the uh, filament. So basically these are filament lamp. So what we see here again is that the resistance is really nonlinear. We can see now the actually behavior of the resistance that starts very low. The blue, I guess, is the halogen and this reddish one is the other one. And then uh, the resistance goes very low and then it goes very high. It's very similar to what we've seen in the table. Now this is the power, I'm not concerned with it, but what is very important is the light output. We see that up to say 30 volt, this is actually not 30 volt, this is 30% of full scale. Up to say 30% of full scale, there's practically no light output. Well, we know this very well. If you take a household lamp, and you drive it with, uh, say, even 10 volt, there'll be no light coming up. Why? Because uh, the filament doesn't heat enough. A filament in a lamp will go perhaps up to a thousand centigrade. So it's very high temperature in order to emit light at a spectrum which is close to white light. So therefore, at low voltage, there is up practically no output. Okay, the lamp, you don't see any light coming out. So this is the characteristic of the lamps. Now, what are we going to do with this uh, question in which we have in lamps in series? So here is the way I'm going to solve it. Now, there are many ways to do it. You can do it by Excel, you can do it by simulation. And I'm proposing here a, a, or showing here a method which actually uh, originated the vacuum tube uh, era and this is something like a load line. So this is a very intuitive way of explaining uh, the, the connection of nonlinear elements. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. The red one is a single lamp. Now if I want to have a characteristic of two lamps, now in series, then the two lamps will have the same current, but the voltage will double. So this is the line for two lamps, okay? So each point I sort of moved it twice, like this is 50, and I moved it to 100. And then I can do the same thing for three lamps. So for example, here we have 20, so I moved it to 60. So this uh, blue-gray line is for three lamps, two lamps, and this is one lamp. And then on top of it, I'm adding the light intensity, just drawing it by hand. This is just a, a conceptual solution, of course. It's not an accurate solution for a given lamp. It is just showing the way to do it. So I've put here like almost zero light in intensity up to say 30%. And then it goes up to 100%. This is again percent. Uh, in, in this case. So now let's consider a number of cases. Suppose the voltage imposed on the system, the voltage is uh, 110, 115 volt. Okay, this could be, by the way, either AC or DC because the filament lamp is equally responding in the same way to an AC voltage or current. And uh, I mean, I'm talking about the uh, line frequency, right? And uh, DC, okay? So let's say it's a 110 DC. And in this case, I find that the, when we have two lamps in series, this will be the current. And when we have three lamps in series, this will be the current, okay? So obviously it's going down because we have three units, right? And now, since I know the current, I can then judge from the characteristic of the single lamp what would be the voltage on each of the lamps. Obviously, it would be the same. And also, I can find out what is the light intensity, okay, for the two cases. So we see that, obviously, for the two lamps, the light intensity is higher. And for the three lamps, it's lower. So in this case, there'll be no change in the light intensity between two and three lamps. I mean, the, there'll be no change in the fact that you see light, okay? And then I move to a case of 80 volt. In this case, you see that, 
well, everything is the same, the currents I can find, the voltage on the lamp. And in this case, we see that uh, for two lamps, we see some light, while it, with three lamps, there's no light. So even though there is a voltage feeding the three lamps, practically you don't see any light intensity coming out, which is, of course, very clear. And then I move to even a lower voltage, and here, for either two or three lamps, there is no light coming out. And then you can find out, of course, what is the current and what is the voltage of each of the lamps in the two states. So this is one way of solving it. Now, knowing this, we go back to the question. Okay, so the first question is, is the intensity of bulb A and B increasing, decreasing, or stay the same? Well, it depends on the voltage. It could increase, and it could stay the same if the voltage is low. And then the same thing goes for the bulb C. Now, obviously, uh, you'd expect that when the sw switch is on, there'd be no light. Right, but what before that? Well, uh, well if the voltage is very low, then the, there'd be no light intensity C even if the switch is open, okay? So again, we have uh, these two options. The only question you can answer is with the current drawn from the battery going up or down. Now, obviously, with the three lamps, uh, there'll be less current, and uh, when it is switched, uh, the current will be higher, okay? Now, the power dissipated in the circuit, well, it's the same as the current, because for a fixed voltage, if, if you're saying that the current is increasing, then the power is increasing. So this is just the same answer as, as this question. So this is just duplicate again. And then as for the current voltage and current, I've shown how to estimate them if you have the information of the lamp. So you can actually solve this nonlinear problem and get all the information that you want. So what is the conclusion here? Well, the conclusion is very clear. You cannot replace lamp filaments by linear resistor in general. Well, of course, in one particular case, you can do that. There's no question about that. But for an involved situation like we have here, you have to know what is the voltage and what is the characteristic of the lamp. And you cannot say, first replace the light bulb with arbitrary inequal resistor. This is absolutely incorrect. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope you found it of interest. Thank you very much.